you need to say you want today, it's lovely weather. So let us worship the living God in joy and love. In the beginning of our worship, I'm going to read a few verses from the Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Let us pray. King of King, Lord of God, Almighty God, we come to you, we worship you, we adore you, we acknowledge your greatness, we give you thanks because you are our Creator. We give you thanks for the fellowship of the believers, Almighty God, we give you praise, we honor you, we worship you, we adore you, Almighty God. We give thanks for your people who have already arrived in the church and those who are joining us through this social media and they are worshiping the living God. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon each and every person, those who are worshiping in the different places, not only in this church, but in our neighborhood. I ask your anointing for the children, those who are leading the choir and the, all the friends and the people who are helping us in this service. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is a joy sensing book number 523. 523. Give me joy in my heart. Number 523. Let us press it. Give me joy in my heart, give me praising, give me joy in my heart. Full of compassion, he is merciful. 
is giving thanks for his only begotten Son, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, who came to this world. He went on the cross. He died and rose again. And he ascended into heaven. As today we are talking about the transfiguration of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. We need to give him thanks for his glory, for his power, for his presence among his people, because alive. Let us praise him and give him thanks for the fellowship of his children, the believers, those who are worshipping in this place and the different churches. We need to give him thanks for our children, our loved ones, our friends, those who are near and far. We need to give him thanks that he is our helper. He is always faithful. In this time of prayer, we need to give him thanks for the wonderful thanksgiving service of our sister Joy. As she is with Christ, we need to give him thanks that he is faithful God. When we are relying upon his strength, his guidance, he is helping us. May God bless our family and give us a thankful heart. Let us be thankful for His Holy Spirit who is living inside of us, the Spirit dwelling in the church. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble heart. We are seeking your face in this place of worship because you are with us. Your name is Emmanuel. Almighty God, we give you thanks because you are the healer. In this time of prayer, we remember your servant, our brother Sunil and his family, especially you give health to his uh, father-in-law. Almighty God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you are always with us. Your uniqueness, your love endure forever. Almighty God, we ask your blessing and your guidance for young people. We give you thanks that you are our protector, you are a provider. Almighty God, we confess our sins in your presence. You are always ready to forgive your people. Please help us that we may glorify your name. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. We are going to sing another hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Number 289. 
Our first scripture reading in this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. Gospel of Saint Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1 to 7. Dear Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking to Jesus. <coughs> Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make their shelters as memorials. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my daily loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Do you have any idea what we are celebrating today? It's a special day today. Hmm. Yes? Any? Confirmation. Transformation. It's, it's a very difficult word, you know. Transfiguration. You know, so many times we are ignoring these kind of uh, special days. We are remembering uh, Christmas, uh, we are very much concerned about the Easter and the New Year, but how many times we are remembering all the, the like the day of Pentecost and the, the uh, transfiguration. The very deep message in this uh, transfiguration. Thanks God I had that experience. I've been on that place. And when I'm talking about this uh, uh, power of this transfiguration in my main sermon, uh, we'll see what's the uh, meaning for us today. But here I would like to uh, share that uh, when I've been there on that mountain, it's so peaceful. Sometimes the mountains, they have a very uh, significant meaning in the Bible. Moses, he went on the mountain, Mount Sinai, and he was talking to God. Jesus, when he went with his disciple, on that uh, mountain and uh, uh, there was a very wonderful experience the disciples they had that. and when I was on that mountain I was thinking that oh my goodness it's a, it's a marvelous you know when they travel all the way on that uh, mountain and they were they were not fully aware what will happen on that mountain and they have uh, uh, seen the glory of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ the good thing in that uh, transfiguration that they have seen the divine Christ. It's a basis of our faith because uh, when they have seen the glorious Christ on that mountain, uh, later when uh, John he wrote at uh, uh, the book of Revelation, he was fully aware about the glory of God. So. This day is very, very important in the Christian calendar because uh, it is giving us uh, assurance about the divinity of our Christ. He is a perfect God and perfect human being. And this is the wonderful, wonderful evidence. The story is like this. Jesus went with his disciples and uh, it was, uh, because some theologians said that it was a uh, night time because uh, Jesus used to pray in the night time, in the evening. And it was a dark on that mountain. And when Jesus was there, suddenly they saw that uh, the face of Jesus was glorious, like the sunshine. And uh, Jesus was talking to Elijah and Moses. And they were astonished. What's going on? Because you can you can imagine a gentleman is going with you. 
His face is very normal. And suddenly, you have seen that it was so powerful, shining face, unbearable light, like a sunshine. Sometimes when we are driving and the sunshine is coming from the, the windscreen, it's unbearable. And we try to put a shed in front of us. Here. So can you imagine that Jesus' face was so powerful, glorious, and uh, they not only seen that Jesus, but uh, they have seen that Moses and Elijah. Why these two gentlemen? Moses is representing the law giver. He is representing the law in the Old Testament. And uh, Elijah, he is representing the prophets of the Old Testament. Moses is also a very important person because he died and uh, God himself buried him. Nobody found his uh, uh, grave. And Elijah, he went with the chariots, fire chariots they took him. And they were talking to Jesus about his uh, death. That was the topic of discussion. They were talking about his crucifixion. So that's why we need to be very happy that we are worshipping the living God, the glorious God. So later we will talk about more about this uh, uh, transfiguration. But here I just want to share that what is the importance and the significance of this Sunday in the church calendar. Now we'll have the offering. There will be an uh, Ash Wednesday service on the 22nd of uh, February at half past seven. So you are welcome. You can join uh, this service. It will be a bilingual service. So you are all welcome to uh, worship with us half past seven on the 22nd of uh, uh, February in this church. So let us pray. All the children, please come forward. Let us spend some time in silence and think about His glory. His presence among His people and His faithful God is always with us. He same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Loving God, Heavenly Father, You are glorious. We give You thanks that You have given glory to Your only begotten Son. And it is your desire that uh, we may carry such glory in our lives. Heavenly Father, loving God, I ask your blessing upon these young people and children. Please be with them and bless them. Help them that they may grow into your likeness. I ask your guidance and your anointing upon them and their parents and their friends and the teachers. Heavenly Father, we know that uh, there's so many temptations, so many hurdles, in our spiritual growth. I ask your protection for these children. Loving God, we give you thanks because you are our provider. Please accept these gifts and use the gift for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we ask this.
Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Number 34. Amen. Rejoice and sing. Number 34. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song will rise. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
what the business says and what the solution says. And he just doesn't come to Krishna. But deliver us from for thine the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Mr. Proceeds. Our next reading is uh, from the Exodus chapter 24, which is 12 to 18. Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 to 18. And I will request on Sri Jaki, please come to the front and read this text for us. Jesus is my what a full taste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. It's of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, watching his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture, burst from my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my soul. This is 
is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Why are the nations in turmoil? Why do the peoples hatch their futile plots? Kings of the earth stand ready, and princes conspire together against the Lord and his anointed king. Let us break their fetters, they cry. Let us throw off their chains. He who sits enthroned in the heavens laugh. The Lord derides them. Then angrily he rebuked them, threatening them in, their, in his wrath. I myself have enthroned my king, he says, on Zion, my holy mountain. I shall announce the decree of the Lord. You are my son, he said to me. This day I become your father. Ask of me what you will. I shall give you nations as your domain. The earth to his father's end of your possession. He will break them with a rod of iron, shatters them like an earthen pot. Be merciful then, you kings. Take warning. You earthly rulers, worship the Lord with reverence, tremble and pay glad homage the King, for fear the Lord may become angry, and you may be struck down in Milkos, for his anger flares up in a mountain. Happy are all who find refuse in him. This is the word of God. Loving God, you are the King of the Kings. We come to you. Almighty God, we understand that we got a limited mind and limited thoughts. But you are perfect God. Your knowledge is perfect. Your word is perfect. But we understand that we are not perfect. We ask your guidance, your Holy Spirit. Please. Help us that we may understand your wisdom. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. This uh, transfiguration is like a beautiful drama on that uh, Mount Tabor. As I said, that is a historical significance of this uh, wonderful incident. It's not a, just a myth or creation of human thoughts. Because when people, they are talking about the stories, they are saying, oh, I went to heaven, I met God, you know, and this and that. But there is no such evidence. There is no witness. In this occasion, let us talk about the character the people, those who are there. First of all, we will talk about the disciples. We need to remember that all the disciples, they were not perfect. There was a dullness. So many times they failed to recognize and identify the true Christ. They failed to understand the mystery of his character. They were not understanding his teaching. And so many times they requested Jesus Christ, oh sir, sorry, we, we, we are not understand what we are talking about. Would you please tell us 
What is the meaning of this parable? And Jesus took them separately in isolation and tried to explain them what is the meaning of that parable. Here you can see that uh, Jesus was talking, if you go to in that context of this incident, Jesus was talking about his crucifixion, his death, his agony, his suffering. And their concept of Christ was not very clear because they were thinking that Messiah will come according to the scripture in the Old Testament. He will rule in this world and they will be with him, they will rule the world. That was their concept. So they were after the power. They were looking something special in their lives. They were not ready for the Messiah who was born in the manger, who was not having any uh, washed palace, you know, simple dress without home. And when he started talking about the suffering, the pain, crucifixion, the crucifixion was very clear in their mind because that was a very cruel death at that time. It was first introduced in the Persia, presently Iran. So the Romans, they were so cruel when they were crucifying the people openly, they displayed their body. So the disciples, they were fully aware about this sense of crucifixion. And they were afraid. And when Jesus was talking to them, they start thinking what would happen to us. Maybe we will die as well. So when you can see their obedience, fear of course that's a part of our life. But you can see their obedience when they said, come we'll go to the mountain, we'll go on to the high. And I said that I have seen their place, we went by car, but uh, it was uh, it was um, quite high mountain. So they were walking on that mountain and Jesus was talking about all these things. When they arrived on that place, you can see the dullness of their mind. The disciples, when they have seen Elijah and Moses and Jesus, the glorious Christ, they start saying, oh, that's, that's good. We should make three tents here. This is a small chapel by the way of that mountain and uh, in that chapel if you got the chance to go there. Have you ever been there in that mountain? Uh, I think for you have been there? Yes. Okay. So there is a place with a small chapel over there and uh, with a uh, art gallery type, you know, there is an art work on that, uh, in that church. So they, they were asking, shall we make three tents here? They were asking something very, very different because uh, there was a tabernacle in the wilderness and the Shekinah, the presence of God was there. So they were, they were aware of that. And what would happen? Suddenly Moses and Elijah they vanished and only Jesus was there and the voice came from heaven. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Don't try to make this tabernacle. There is only one pure tabernacle, the place, the temple. He is my son, my savior. Jesus Christ he is my son, my savior. And uh, God said, Listen to me. First voice came from heaven when he was baptized, and uh, the voice came from heaven. This is my son to whom I am pleased. But here the voice is saying, listen to him. Don't try to focus upon Moses and Elijah. Of course they are important. But here you need to listen to my son, your savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Don't focus upon all these people. So it's, it's very important what was happening on that uh, mountain. Then you can see the other character, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. What was Jesus trying to teach them? That is also very significant. Actually, Jesus was encouraging them 
You don't need to be afraid. Listen to me. And saw his glory. He has seen that on the mountain. He said, look at me. I'm a glorious. Even if I will die, I'm giving you a hope. The hope of the resurrection. I'm, I'm so blessed that the uh, day before yesterday I led that uh, funeral of uh, uh, lovely sister Joy. And uh, before the funeral, we were all very sad, isn't it? That we were so sad we are missing her. Of course, we'll miss her in future as well. But I have seen the faces of the people when we came back from the funeral. They were all very relaxed. We were enjoying the food and the fellowship. Because we were carrying the hope. We were, we were sharing that hope in the church. So here Jesus was encouraging them that you, you shouldn't be scared. There shouldn't be any fear about the crucifixion. There shouldn't be any doubt in your mind. He was talking about the glory of God. So brother and sister, no doubt there is a persecution, there is suffering in this world, but as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the children of God, we need to be assured about that glory. And Jesus Christ, he gave such wonderful, wonderful evidence on that mountain. There was a glory of God. That's why, you know, the disciples, especially Saint Paul, he used to call Saul, and he was uh, uh, giving hard time to the prison. He was arresting them, sending them to the prison. But when he met the glorious Christ on the way of Damascus, he became so confident. It was marvelous. He went to the prison. He was beaten by the Romans. He suffered a lot. He had done three major missionary journeys because he was very much aware about the glory of God. And in the letter to the Corinthians, in the chapter 15, he talked about that glory. That Jesus Christ is the first fruit who was resurrected. And all the believers, they will have such wonderful, wonderful, glorious body when Jesus Christ will come. So today, on this special Sunday of transfiguration of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ, He gave us a wonderful message. It's a, it's a knowledge about the resurrected Christ. So that's why I was saying that uh, uh, these events, these days are very important. It's giving us some sort of the strength. We are, we are so confident about our future that we will share such glory with him. Disciples of Jesus Christ, John, they, they were all human beings. But they shared that glory on that mountain. In the same way, brother and sister, in our sorrow in this world, after that, we will enter into that glory. The most important thing there should be a spirit of discernment. We need to understand the beauty and the glory of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Disciples, even they have seen the glory of Christ, they fail to uh, discern that. That's why they were requesting for the, for the tent, for the two places, for the Moses and Elijah and for Christ. And that was their request because Jesus was glorious over there and uh, they were they were they were thinking about living with him in that glory do you have such desire in one heart of course we are going through very difficult situation nowadays there is a, there's a problem with the pain and agony and so many issues in this world, but we are moving towards that glory. You know, in our in our journey of faith, 
you know, there are three, three steps of that faith and uh, salvation. The first is we are justified by the precious blood of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. That is the first phase of our salvation. The second phase of our salvation is sanctification. Day by day, we are, uh, we are becoming sanctified. And the time will come. That is the third phase of our salvation when we will enter into that glory. Then the salvation will come complete on that glory. At the moment we are in that process of perfection. We are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But we are in the process of sanctification and perfection. When we we'll get there into the heaven, when we we'll enter into that glory, then the whole process of that salvation will be complete. It's completed by Jesus Christ because He centered on the cross, is finished. He has completed His mission, mission accomplished. But from our side, as we are walking with Him, day by day, we are becoming unto His likeness. And time will come when we will enter into that glory and then our salvation will be complete. So, today, in silence, we need to give Him thanks for His glory, for His power, for His wonderful promises that will be glorious in His presence. There will be no more sickness, there will be no more death. We will see His face and we will live with Him forever and ever. So there shouldn't be any ignorance. It's not good to be ignorant about the glory of Christ. There shouldn't be any dullness about the glory of Christ. We need to give him thanks that his people, they will be with him forever and ever. Let us pray and spend some time in silence. There is a needless fear in our lives. Jesus wants to encourage us and he said, get up, don't be afraid. There are so many people who are terrified. They are afraid from the pain and the suffering in this world. But today, in this uh, special day of transfiguration of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, focus upon glorious Christ. He's glorious. He's wonderful. He's God. He's perfect man and perfect God. Give him thanks that he's giving us hope for everlasting life and everlasting joy, peace and harmony with our Heavenly Father. He opened the life gate for us. He gave us life to open that gate. Give thanks for the disciples and the people, those who had that experience, the glory of God. And they shared such wonderful, wonderful mystery and revelation through the word of God with us. May God give us a wisdom that we may tell other people about the glory of our Christ Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks because you are glorious. And uh, you ask your Heavenly Father that as you have received such glory, you wanted to make us glorious. You want to share such glory with us. You want to take us in that glorious place where there will be no more sickness, death, pain, suffering. We will live with you forever and ever and we will see your face. We give you thanks for the experience of Moses on that mountain when he had that experience of the living God. And he was coming from the mountain with the glorious face. Heavenly Father, Bless you people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Let us uh, sing together. First and obey, there is no other way. When we walk with the Christ. You know when Jesus was risen from the dead and there were people, they were walking with him, two people, they were going on the way of Emmaus. And uh, 
Jesus was talking about his crucifixion and his uh, resurrection. And when they were sharing the meal together, uh, first they failed to uh, identify Christ. But when they were breaking the bread, and Jesus blessed that bread, and they identified that he is Christ. So when we are living with him, and he is, uh, uh, he is among us, we need to identify him. But for that sake, as the disciples, they became obedience, and uh, Moses, he became obedient because when God said, come to the mountain, he went to the mountain. He, there was a purpose behind that. He wanted to give him the Ten Commandments and the law. So in the same way, we need to walk with him with trust and obedience. So let us sing together in number 269. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. 269. When we walk with the Lord in the light of